the guns are blazing, dodging bullets cause they aiming, hiding in the shadows, lurking, battlefields on fire. Okay guys, this is so journey, y'all, so journey for truth. I wanted to come to y'all today with another um, teaching. Um, today's title is, Are You Provoking the Most High Yah to Wrath? So, of course, I always do my um, prayer um, before I do my teaching. So, Father, I come to you in the name of your son, Yahweh Shai, Yeshua, the Messiah. I come to you humbly as I know how. I come to you asking you to increase in me while I decrease in that you be the mouth um, of whatever you want me to say that the Holy Spirit moves in me in a way that will be edifying to the people so that they will understand the things that are coming out of my mouth and know that it is you that gets all the glory, that they will be um, pur uh, purified in the word and that they will be moved to uh, repent and be moved to um, change some of their ways about them so that they can draw closer and draw nigh to you. I pray that... Um, that they will be edified and they will um, become whole and become as one again and that we can um, worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this hour. I pray for deliverance. I pray for um, the, the chains to be broken off of the people that are listening to this teaching. And I pray also for uh, the scales to be removed from their eyes so that they can um, see in a spiritual way instead of in their natural way and to have a more spirit man than walking the ways of a carnal man. I thank you, Father, in Yeshua Hamashiach name. I pray all of these things and they shall be done. Amen. Okay, so my teaching is about are you provoking Yah to wrath? So I'm going to go ahead with, um, I have lots of scriptures about, about wrath, but I'm not going to try to make this too long. And I think it's going to flow pretty good. Um, I'm going to go into, of course, like I said, I like etymology. So first we want to go in and, um, let's see what this word wrath means. Okay. What does the word wrath means? So when we look up the word wrath, the word wrath, it means angry. So this means that are we provoking the most high to anger? We should not be trying to make the most high angry. But this is what he said. He said in Numbers chapter 11, verse 33, it says, And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the um, Adonai or the most high or the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Adonai, um, I, used to, I like to say it in Hebrew form, um, smote the people with a great, a very great plague. So let's look up the word plague because this sounds like pretty much what we got going on now. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say a plague is pestilence. Come on. Okay. Let's see. So a plague is a, a, affliction, calamity, evil, scourge, malignant disease. So all the things that's happening now, we must have provoked Yah, the Most High, to anger because he said, I smote the people with a very great plague. And we know in the Bible that it will be many more plagues, um, according to the Bible, in the last days. Um, it will be pestilence and plagues all over. But let's see what the word smoke means. Because like I said, sometimes we don't understand um, certain things. So smote is the past tense. So this is the present tense. So it says to hit, to strike, to beat. Okay. To smear on, to soil, pollute. So that's what's happening right now. The earth all around the world has been polluted with this coronavirus, has been polluted with this plague. Okay. Regardless if it's been a pandemic or it's a pandemic, regardless, it has been polluted. The whole earth is polluted in this hour with this plague that came from the wrath of the most high okay and so he's showing us right there that somebody pissed him off somebody made him angry the nation made him angry the children of israel made him angry 
And so he had to do what he had to do. He smote the people with a very great plague. So now we're going to number 16 and 46 states. And Moses said unto Aaron, take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath going out from the uh, Lord, the most high, the plague is begun. So you see what Moses is doing. Moses is trying to turn everything around in so many ways. So when we see the word atonement, because see, he, he was wise. When you have a wise person, you have wise people around you, they know how to turn God's wrath away from them. And, um, you know, that goes back into the story with um, the people of Nineveh. And I think I did a, a teaching on that about Nineveh and how the people put on the sackcloth and they fast and they pray and the Lord took the wrath away from them, took the judgment. So, you know, so many ways uh, took the judgment away from them. So atonement means a condition of being at one with others. A sense now obsolete. Um, reconciliation. A man with God through life, passion and death of Christ. Uh, I don't know what they're saying or that, but reconciliation. Okay. A satisfaction or reparation for wrong or in injury. Okay, so Moses said, well, we know that uh, the children of Israel, they did something bad. Let's go ahead and get this um, incense. Let's start burning this myrrh and this frankincense and put this, this sweet um, smell into, you know, the congregation for pretty much, you know, us submitting ourselves to the most high. For us um, saying that we are sorry pretty much for... Um, giving a reconciliation for the wrongdoings that was done in the eyes of the most high. Okay, so this is what has to be done when you want to turn the wrath away from the most, uh, from what the most high is doing in, um, you know, in the earth. So for the wrath is going out, they see the plagues, they, they like, oh my gosh, we got to do something. A lot of people today are still being distracted by the things in this world and they're not doing an atonement or they're not um, fasting and praying and they're not returning back to their Elohim. They're not turning back to the most high. And that's why stuff is still happening because they're, um, they don't have a fear of the most high. And like I said, the Holy Spirit is just moving through me. So um, I just want to go into like a scripture that says, uh, fear the Lord, because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fear the Lord. And there's a lot of people that do not fear the most high. They do not fear that he will really smite you or smoke you or whatever, you know, will not hurt you. But um, these things will happen. Okay. So I just wanted to go into, um, I'm just trying to see if I can find one of the scriptures. I think it would be probably like a psalm or something that would say, uh, fear the Lord or something like that. Okay, here's here's one. Deuteronomy 6 and 13 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Okay? And so these are the things that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fear the most high. When we look up the word fear, let's see what the word fear means. Okay, so we look up the word fear. Fear means to... Okay. Fear means to um, calamity, sudden danger, peril, or uh, ambush, uh, distress, harm. So we know that fear means bad things are going to happen. So we should fear any type of danger coming to us. So we pose a fear of the Lord. We know that calamity, we know that uh, wrath is upon us, anger. Is upon us, and it's a lot of people that are not fearing the Lord in this hour, and there's a lot of people that are playing with um, the Most High, but His judgment is 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 righteous. Okay, and so um, I just wanted to pull those little things out, and so I'm gonna go to Deuteronomy. Okay, Deuteronomy nine. And seven through nine tells us, and I hope I spelled it right, y'all. It ain't gonna come up. <laughs> nope. Of course I didn't spell it right. Um, I left out Deuteron. I left out the whole N M. Okay.
Okay, there we go. So Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7 through 9 says, Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord, thy Elohim, or their God, which I don't really like using the word God because it's a deity and he does have a name, the Most High, Yahuwah, to wrath in the wilderness. For the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. You have been rebellious against the Most High. Okay? So I just want to go into what does provoke mean? Okay? Because we always talking about these different words. But let's pull out the meaning of these words. Okay? So when you provoke somebody, what does that mean? That says you are challenging them. Okay? You are calling forth. You are provoking them you are challenging them to anger so it says go back to deuteronomy it says how thou challenge the lord thy god to wrath so you challenge the lord to anger in the wilderness so it's like okay rebellious going to that word rebellious um which the lord tells us a lot about being rebellious people <laughs> and being stiff neck and all of that things um in the bible um so it's saying, well, let's go to rebel. Let's take out all that and see what rebel means. So a rebel is um, to revolt, okay, to revolt. When we see the word revolt, let's see what that means. Because we want to get to the root of what this word means. So when it says to revolt, to overthrow, overturn, okay, to roll back. So... He gives us commandments, statutes, and laws, and we rebel. We turn away. We turn away from what he wants us to do against the Lord. And so in verse 8, it says, also in Horeb, ye provoke, here again, but in another place, there's a second time saying, remember then when you provoked me again uh, to wrath so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. So again, the Lord is pouring out his wrath. In the Old Testament, he had grace and mercy as you continue to go through the stories um, with Nineveh and, um, and Nehemiah, with, you know, the, the minor prophets and things like that. But in the beginning, no, there was no grace, no mercy. And, you know, he, I guess the most high heart, it, it just started getting a little bit more you know, it started changing, saying, I need to give more mercy on these people. These people are, are ridiculous. You know, they're hard-headed, they're stiff-necked, they think they know everything. They keep falling on these traps of, of, of Satan and Hashatan and his minions and um, these fallen angels and these demonic forces. They keep falling in the hands of idolatry and all this stuff, and I'm going to get into that in a second to tell you why the wrath came upon the people. Okay, and so verse 9 says, when I was going up into the mount to receive the, ta the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which the Lord, the Most High, made with you, then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. So right here, this is pretty much that atonement and um, saying I didn't eat bread nor water. So getting to the fast and, you know, um, submitting yourself to God. Submit yourself to the Most High in that hour after the wrath comes upon the people. That's what you, you know, nine times out of ten, that's what you should do. Um, if you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but if you a fool, you're going to act like a fool, okay? And a lot of people out here are foolish, and they have folly in their heart, and um, they have a lot of wickedness in their heart, and a lot of wickedness in their just way of thinking and just everything. They love wicked behavior. So Deuteronomy 9, chapter 9, verse 22 says, um, and the Taborah, oh, and, excuse me, and at Taborah, and at Mas Masah, or Masaiah, um, and at Kirbroth Hetavah, ye provoke the Lord to wrath. So again, he's trying to tell the people, you remember that time? You remember that time? You know, you talk to people and be like, you remember that time when we went here 
and um you saw that girl or you know you remember when you seen um keisha and she made you mad and you fought her you remember that time you seen her again at the club and she jumped in your face again she provoked you again to anger and um you beat her again and you know so this is what the lord is doing the most high he is trying to give them remembrance of you know these times when you made me mad i beat you down I put that wrath on you. I put them plagues on you. I put that pestilence on you. I brought you um, into Egypt. I made your oppressors be rulers over you. Um, I made you, you know, you remember when you was hung on the tree and you got burnt and, um, you know, when your limbs was cut off and you know how they put, you know, different illnesses in you. You remember the time when I made all this stuff happen? So you start remembering these bad times. This makes you want to get on your knees and fast and pray and be like, nah, I don't want to do that. Or I don't want that to happen to me. Or yeah, you remember when that happened to your ancestor? You remember back in um, you know, in um the olden days, back long, long time ago, when um I brought them ships to come and pick your family up, your ancestors. You remember that time? But um, you take me for a joke, so I'm gonna have to do it all over again. So this is what the Lord is pretty much saying to his, you know, pretty much to our ancestors, because this is what happened to our ancestors. This is not no fable. This is not no joke. This is not a game. This happened to our ancestors. Okay. So he's saying it, but why did these things happen? So we're going to go right into it. We're going to go right into 2 Kings um, chapter 22 tells us what was going on, which is many, many instances right after Moses took the, the children um, into the promised land, they made the golden calf. So already they broke the commandment when you don't supposed to have any images and bow down to no images, idols, nothing like that. But they did, okay? And so 2 Kings 22, 13 says, go ye inquire of, or inquire, I think that's inquire of the most high um, for me and for the people and for all Judah or Yehuda." concerning the words of this book that um is found for great is the wrath which we know is anger so great is the anger of the most high that is kindled against us because our fathers have now hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us so again going back to not following the commandments um doing whatever you want to do um being rebellious these people, I don't see how nobody don't believe that these are our ancestors. So we are these people. We act the same way our ancestors act. We are a rebellious nation. We think we know more than what the prophets know, more than what the word is telling us, more than what the Most High shows us. We are a rebellious people. And I'm going to get to um, a little bit more about rebellious and being stiff neck because we have a lot, a lot of scriptures that talks about being rebellious and, and all of that. Okay, but um, Second Kings chapter 22 16 to 17 says thus said the lord the most high behold i will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof even all the words of the book which the king of yehuda have read because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other gods these are your sage you know you have people that say oh why you can't burn sage because that's not the frankincense and the mirth okay sage is not to be burnt sage is a a uh, uh, herb that is to be cooked with and um and some other things you can do with sage but not to be burnt because like i said that is a strange smell that is not that is an unpleasant smell that's a stinky smell that is not pleasant to him okay that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands therefore my wrath my anger shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched so that means um he ain't pulling away from it the wrath is coming upon and it's coming upon the people um mightily in so many words okay and um you know you forsake them forsake we can go to the word forsake and pull it out and just go and see what it says but what what happens when somebody forsakes somebody let's see what forsake means forsake says to object things that the lord has given us to protect our temple to protect our spirit from these demonic forces that are running rapid in this um in this earthly room that we are in okay those are the things that we shall be forsaken deny your flesh 
not deny um, the most high power, not deny the Holy Spirit, okay? And so that is what forsake me. So he said, because you have forsaken me, because you have denied the power, because you have denied my word, this is going to happen to you. So going back um, and saying, these are the things that happened to my ancestors. I'm going to bring um, anger upon you. I'm going to bring um, wrath upon you. And this is what happened while we were taken from, you know, taken into captivity and all the things that happened to us. So now I'm going to go into some of the reasons why these things were happening to us and why we cannot hearken our hearts to do the right thing. This is still happening today, okay? It's, it's in a, a newer term or a new way, but we do have, um, we do have things that we are doing that is provo provoking the most high to wrath, okay? And I have a video teaching about are we, worship, uh, are we practicing idolatry without even knowing, okay? So Second Chronicles 24 and 18 says, and they left the house of the Lord, um, God of their fathers, Yahuwah, and served groves and idols. And wrath or anger came upon Yehudah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. So it tells you right here, groves and idols, which um, I, I, I've told y'all what idols is, but for the sake of this video, let's go and see what an idol is. You know, we, we, look, at our, we look at American Idol, we uh we uh, we idolize all of these uh stars and like certain things are coming out now about the human trafficking the pedophile ring you know you tell people oh tom hanks you know he's a pedophile oh you know hillary clinton's a pedophile oh you know oprah winfrey's a pedophile but then when people when you hear people say this no they're going to um defend their idols they love their celebrities they love their elites more than the most high but these things are true, okay? So idolatry is worship of idols or images. So these people are worshiping images of people, images of these celebrities, images of all of these things that um, they are doing wicked things in high places, okay? You're worshiping them without even knowing. You're worshiping your things. You're worshiping your job. You're worshiping, uh, you know, you're, you're putting more energy into those things than, than being and having a relationship with the most high Yah, okay? And so he's jealous. Like he said, don't provoke me to jealousy. You know, do, why you want to provoke me to jealousy? So I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to bring this wrath on you. I'm going to bring this pestilence on you. I'm going to bring this, this captivity on you. I'm going to bring these curses on you, okay? And so this is what happened. And these are the same things that are happening today. The Lord raises up prophets and prophetess in this hour to let people know, you know that you're doing idolatry. You know that... Um, I'm telling you, these people are wicked. Like I even have told my friends about certain things that are uh, conspiring in this hour. And they said, no, I don't believe that. Where are you reading this from? With my own eyes, I've seen the human trafficking. I've seen um, the evil things that they are doing. This is not a lie. The Lord said he will reveal all things to his people. Okay. And um, everything that's done in God will come to the light. And these are scriptures. Okay. And for us that know the word, we know these are scriptures. Okay. This is not my word. This is the most high word. So 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 89 says, Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourself unto the Lord the Most High, and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Most High, your Elohim, or your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Okay? So he's telling us right here, you stiff-necked, you rebellious. We don't even have to really look at the word stiff-necked. Stiff-necked is rebellious. Okay, stiff neck is, well, let's pull it out, you know, because sometimes y'all just don't understand what, what, what the Lord is really saying. So let's go ahead and pull it out. And, and you have no excuse when judgment day comes. That you, you can't be like, well, I didn't know what stiff neck was, or I didn't know what, what, what these words were, because uh, Sojourney, she showed me these words, okay? The, 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 the angels have wrote it in their book that, that you know these things, that you, that you, have, uh, that you have been taught these things so you have no excuse you're stubborn okay you're obstinate okay and so that's what's going on we're stubborn stubborn people don't want to turn away from their ways and they don't want to be corrected or have reproved for their um things or don't want to get convicted okay stubborn don't want to turn away but he said turn away 
and serve me with all your heart. In so many words, that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to serve him with all our heart and all our being, okay? And it said, for if you turn again unto the most high, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive so that they shall come again into this land. For the most high, your Elohim, your God, is gracious and merciful, the most high, Yahuwah, and will not turn away his face from you if ye return unto him. So the Lord is saying, fall on your face, repent, turn away from your sins, and come back to me. Um, worship me in spirit and in truth. I will have compassion on you. I will not bring nobody to come into the land and take you out your land and um, have you in a bondage for over 400 years. But this, is, this, is, this, this did not happen because we know the history of what happened. We did not turn away. We kept on doing idolatry. We kept on doing the things that the Lord told us not to do. And that's why we are not in our promised land. Okay. And that's why we don't have anything. And that's why we are not promised. Um, that's why we are not, we have not gotten the promise that the Lord has given to our ancestors because we are our ancestors' children. Okay. We are the four, we are those our father's children. Okay. We are these people. We are our father's children. Okay. In so many words, like even with my dad, my dad saw the light and I'm going to tell y'all a story. My dad got paralyzed when I was seven years old. He always believed in the most high, loved the Lord with all his heart, mind, and soul. Always. The Lord told him, I'm not taking you. I got something for you to do. So when I was seven years old, I always knew it was a, a heaven because my, my father, he saw the light. He saw the marvelous light. He was there with Yahuwah. Okay, he was there with the most high. But for some reason, because these things happen, we backslide, we get back into the world. My dad died in 2018 from an overdose of being uh, taking drugs. Okay, the same thing that happened to him while he was shot. Jewelry um, and being drugs. You know, he got robbed for his jewelry, but he was also, you know, dabbling in drugs that was his downfall the world was his downfall and so i don't want to be like my father okay my mother she was more of a church going woman she was more of a virtuous woman so that's how i can get that balance but my father he was stiff neck and he was rebellious and look where it led him to it led him to death it led him to not being here anymore okay by being around wicked people and they bringing him wicked drugs because my dad was paralyzed living in a nursing home. So he was not going out there getting it. People was bringing it to him or either he was meeting people that were, you know, were wicked and doing evil things. And that's how my dad lost his life. Okay. So Nehemiah, that was just a bit of information just to try and show you how we are our father's children. <laughs> and so Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 17 and 18 says, then I contended with the nobles of Yehuda or Judah and said unto them, what evil thing is that that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus and did not our Elohim the Most High bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So we know right now times and laws have changed, but I still um, have my Shabbat or my Sabbath day. I don't, you know, do anything but teach or I fellowship with other people, other believers that believe, you know, the same thing that I believe. And so we should not profane the Sabbath day. A lot of people are saying that, um, you know, that law is done away with, but no, that's a commandment. And because we have people that are wicked, that was in high places, um, they changed the time and the laws, the papacy, your, your popes. Okay, they changed the time and laws, but once you know the truth, um, you fall back into knowing that Sabbath day is from Friday night to Saturday, uh, to Saturday night. Well, I say Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, you know, and we suppose, you know, let's consecrate ourselves. You know, this is a day of rest. This is, you know, that's what Sabbath day was, a day of rest, a day to reflect on the, the new week that's coming, that's on tomorrow. You know, the, the, to cover ourselves, to have our souls, you know, ready for the spiritual warfare that we are in. And, um, so, that's why I practice uh, the Sabbath because it is a commandment and I don't want to break the commandments and I don't want God's wrath to be upon me, okay? So I'm going to be obedient and I'm not going to be rebellious and stiff-necked. 
And so that's what happened um, when it came to when it came to that. Some people are going to disagree about the Sabbath. That's on you. Again, you have been taught. So you cannot say these things are done away with. And um, it is what it is. You have to speak to the most high. You have your relationship with, with the most high. And, um, you know, that's all. That's all I can say. I can't. I can't do nothing else about that. The Lord have to give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know what is true and what is not. Okay. But I just give out the information so that you can think. Okay. So, uh, Ezekiel five, chapter five, verse five and seven tells us. It said, uh, okay. I got so many things, y'all. Just give me a second. Okay, so Ezekiel 5 and um, 5 and 10 said, Thus said the Lord Most High Yahuwah, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she have changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments, my statutes, they have not walked in them. Therefore, thus said the Lord the Most High Yahuwah, because ye multiply more than the nations that are round about you, they have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. So he's telling us, you ain't did what I told you to do. You are more than all the nations around you. You're supposed to be setting an example. That's what we were always supposed to do, set an example for the other nations. Okay, and that's why, you know, um, Yeshua, he said, go out into all the nations and preach the gospel and there's a lot of people that don't agree with that but it's saying it in the book and so again you have to have your own relationship with the most high to understand the truth and all of these things and so um he said go out into the land and preach the gospel right after he got crucified i just read this the book the story about um christ being crucified this morning because you know we always need a refresher on certain things and, and what truly did happen and how peter you know denied him <laughs> You know, Peter denied him two times, and like, like, like he said, you're gonna deny me two times before the the, the crow cro, uh, cro, the crow crocs like a tongue tie or tongue twister, uh, twice or three times or whatever, and that's what happened. So Ezekiel 25 and 17 said, and I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, okay, and they should know that I am the Lord, the Most High, Yahuwah, okay. When I shall lay my vengeance upon them. So let's see what rebuke means. Okay? Because he said, I'm going to show you who I am. I ain't got to keep talking. I am the most high. I am in charge. I do all things. I use the devil for my good. I bring on whatever I want to bring on. A reproof. So let's look up the word reproof, which I know what it is. It's, 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 it's correction. Okay? But when you look at the word reproof, Reproof says disgrace, shame, um, pretty much rejection, to blame, accuse. So reproof, and then you got reproof. Reproof is um, disgrace, reject. So this is what happened. He said, I'm going to reject my furious rejection, and they will know that I am the Lord. So for over 400 and some years, he has been rebuking us. He has been rejecting us. He has been turning his face away from us. Okay, he, he can't he can't even hear those that are not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, those that want to be lukewarm, those that are doing all the things. He said, I'm gonna bring vengeance, I'm gonna bring um, you know, I'm gonna bring all these things upon you. This is like a prophet time. Okay, so this is the things that are gonna be happening pretty much in this time that we are in now, because these are your last day prophecies. Okay, so he's telling us we need to turn back to him. We don't want him to uh to give us vengeance. He don't want we don't want to see his vengeance. We don't want to make the most high mad. Okay, I know I don't want to provoke him to wrath. Because I fear the most high. I believe what he said he's gonna do. And uh so I got fear. Okay, call it what you want. Yeah, I'm I'm scared. I'm scared to death of the most high. So I'm going to try my best to live a perfect life in his eyes because I don't want none of this stuff to happen to me. So Ezekiel 22 verse 31 says, Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their head, said the Lord Yahuwah. Okay? 
So let's go and see what indignation is, okay? Uh, so indignation is wrath. Well, excuse me, rage, fury, disrespect. Wow. Unworthy. Be angry. Displeased at. He's mad. He said, I'm going to pour out my rage, my anger, my dis, uh, what is that? My dis, uh, displeasement with you. I'm displeased with you. You are my people out of all people. You are the apple of my eye. I love y'all more than any, I love you more than anything in this world. And y'all want to keep playing with me. That's, this is like, I'm paraphrasing like if I was the most high. This is what he is saying to us. Stop playing with me. But I'm going to show you the same way like your mama, your daddy says, stop doing that, ja little Johnny. But little Johnny want to keep doing it. Okay, little Johnny, I'm going to whip your tail. You know, I'm going to show you and pour out my wrath on you making me angry now. So now I'm going to have to really, really show you who's in charge. In so many words, this is what he is saying. Okay. And so let's see what the word recomp recompense is. Okay, because that word it, it is in the Bible a lot about recompense. And if I'm not saying it right, charge to my, my mouth and my um my southern talk. Okay. <laughs> so re recompense. Okay. Oh, I think I spelled it right. I don't know. Nope. It's S E. Stay with me, y'all. Okay, recompense. Recompense says weigh together, literally, will balance out to compensate. Okay, so he said pretty much, I'm gonna give you your wrath. I'm gonna give you the wrath, and he's saying, um, you making me mad. It says their own way have I balanced upon their heads, upon you know, say the Lord. I've done all I can. I've given you mercy upon mercy upon grace upon grace upon mercy and mercy and mercy. And I balanced out um, your good and your bad and all this stuff. And you see, I want to play with me. In so many words, this is what the Most High is saying. Okay? And so, um, I'm trying to figure out where I want to go to because I got so many other scriptures. So I'm going to go into Psalms because I want to go into another part after that so i'm going to psalms so psalms 37 and 8 tells us cease from anger and forsake wrath fret not thyself in any wise to do evil stop doing evil turn away you know turn away from evil so that the anger of the wrath of the most high did not come upon you Okay, this is this is something that we need to meditate on today. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any way to do evil. Let's stop doing evil things. Let's stop being around wicked and corruptible people. Okay, because we're going to see what wicked and corruptible people are going to get you. You're going to go into the lake of fire. Okay, you're going to see the day of wrath. You're going to feel the most high's wrath. And it's not going to be pretty. Okay, and so, um, I'm going to go into 12 and 19 now. And let's see what's on. So Romans 12 and 19 tells us. If my computer gets to it. <laughs> Bear with me. My computer looks slow. Okay. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, written. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Perfect. It's, it's moving me right to what I want. So he says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So this is like um, all the things that's going on, even when it came to uh, the oppressors. Vengeance is his. He's going to repay them. Like he gave us into the hands of the oppressors. However, he did not tell the oppressors to do all of the bad things that they did, they did so much wickedness and they're still doing wickedness that he's going to, he's going to repay them. And it's going to be vengeance. You know, vengeance is pretty much, I'm going to get you back. Now I, I put you, 
I, I, I allowed you to be over my people, but I ain't say burn them and and um and cut and and and, and use them as guinea pigs. And I didn't say um. And I didn't say uh. And I didn't say oh there it is. Didn't do it. And I didn't say to do all these things that you have done. You have done such wickedness. You know, I was just looking at about the syphilis of 1938 and how the Tuskegee uh, experiment, they were shooting the Tuskegee people for 40 years. This was an experiment with syphilis. And then they died because they did not give them no treatment or anything like that. So then we got these vaccinations where they're trying to vaccinate our children with 76 and 100 vaccinations. Like I said, back in, I'm, I was born in 1980, I only got like six or seven vaccination shots. But then they want to start vaccinating the kids when they're like uh, two weeks old. And I've seen videos where these children are like, pretty much right after they get these vaccinations, they are having seizures. And I mean, their whole, their whole way have been destroyed. You know, their whole life is destroyed because they are no longer normal and they are, are disabled. Now. So the wickedness that is going on, it said vengeance. I will get vengeance. I will punish you. Okay? So that's why we need to be not with Babylon. We need to not be with the heathens and with the other nations or the people that are, are practicing wickedness and idolatry and all these things that the Lord does not like. We need to turn back to our God, to our most high Yahuwah. Okay? We don't need to be worshiping pagan gods. We don't need to be worshiping gods that don't have no power. Okay? We need to be worshiping the most high Yah, okay? And so he said, vengeance is man. I'm going to get you. Like I, I, I allowed you to, to, to be over my people, but I didn't tell you to hurt them like that. I said, you know, to punish them. But the things that you have done was crimes against humanity. And we have a big law that's going around right now that uh, Donald Trump has put into place about crimes against humanity, human trafficking, genocide. And God is getting his, uh, his uh, vengeance right now. And, and um, this is just the beginning. People will know more about what I'm talking about in the near future. Okay. But like the Lord said, he does not do anything until he reveals it to his prophet and his prophetess, you know, and to his people. So he revealed things to me and I'm just, put, you know, putting a little bit out there for you. But Romans 1.18 says, for the wrath of the most high Yahuwah is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So again, come from out of her, come from out of Babylon, come from out of uh, worshiping these celebrities and these elite people and all these elitists. Come from out of all of this stuff because the wrath, the vengeance is coming. The vengeance is here. The judgment is here in so many words, okay? And, um, you know, you don't have to believe it, believe it or not. You know, like I said, meditate on his word. Uh, fast and pray and the Lord will show you what he's doing in this hour, okay? So, um, Romans 2 and 8 said, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey, or contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So these people, uh, when the, when it says you do not obey, we know what the word obey will obey means. So let's see what the word obey means when you, when you don't obey. So we're just going to do the opposite of what this word is. So obey means to carry out the commands. So psh, there you go. We ain't got to go no more. When you do not obey the commandments, when you do not keep the commandments, when you do not obey the truth, but you rather do uh, paganism, or you rather do idolatry, or you rather uh, practice witchcraft and sorcery, and you rather uh, do these twerking dances that are conjuring up demonic spirits in your body. You will have indignation and wrath. You are making me mad. You are bringing me to anger, and you are provoking me. You know, and that's what he is saying. And so, um, we do not want to provoke the Most High to. So anger and wrath, okay? Because he said, I'm going to have revenge. I'm going to have vengeance. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, okay? So Nahum 1 and 2 says, the most high is jealous. And 
the most high revenge. The most high revenge and is furious. He's mad. And the most high will take vengeance of his adversaries and he reserved wrath for his enemies. So again, going back to this land, going back to all the people that conspired to keep us away from our most high, conspired to change laws and times, conspired to create a savior that did not look like us, that whitewashed history, that took our history away from us. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Okay, revenge is, is healed. Okay, for the enemies. Okay, and when you see what an adversary is, an adversary is somebody that's like an opposer. Okay, when you see the word ad adversary. So your adversary is your enemy, unfriendly opponent. Okay, hostile. Uh, these are things like when you know you're talking about your adversary. Uh, this is somebody that opposes you. So it says, especially Satan at the enemy. We know that he is the enemy. He is the enemy of humans, the enemy of the world. He is the enemy of God. He is the enemy of his people. Anybody that loves God and is a friend of God, Satan is an enemy of ours. Okay? So he says we are enemy of his. So he's trying to destroy us. He tries to play like he likes us. Okay? Uh, these are like your wolf, your, your uh, Wolves and sheep clothing. Okay? There's many, many people in high places like this. They're coming down. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Okay? And so this is what's happening in this hour. So um, I want to just go into a couple of more scriptures. Um, so I'm going to go into Matthew. Let's go into Matthew. Because Matthew says... And then, like I said, the Lord, he always reiterates the same thing over and over again in two and three scriptures. But Matthew chapter three, verse seven tells us, but when he saw many of the Pharisees, which we know are hypocrites, and the Sadducees, which we know are people that do not believe in the Holy Spirit, that do not believe in the resurrection, do not believe in Christ, but they only believe in um, the Most High, come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. Who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come so this is what has happened um we can put this into lameness terms of today we have so many ceos that have stepped down i mean you got over 200 maybe more ceos of big corporations that have stepped down they have hid themselves in bunkers do you know why because they have been practicing human trafficking okay and the wrath of god is upon them Okay, and you can believe what you want to believe. These things are happening. Human trafficking is one of the biggest um, things that's happening and it has been happening for centuries about sacrificing our children to Molech, which is in the Bible about Molech. And I have uh, teachings about that. And to bow into the bow worship into the, you know, the Baphomet system into Satan. And so he said, who have warned you to flee? No, don't flee. You can't hide from God. You can't hide from God. Okay? You can think you can hide from God, but God got the final say. The Most High got the final say. And again, he says it again. Then said he to the, to the, multi, to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Okay? And so let's look at this word vipers. Which sounds like it's some snakes or something. But let's see what it, let's see what uh what old etymology tells us. Let's see what the viper is. Um so let me take the S off so I can really get it. So a viper is a serpent. I was right. See the Holy Spirit, it moves in you and, and it's like. You have knowledge. You be like, well, I know that. <laughs> but it's the Holy Spirit because that is your teacher, the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so um, this is what the Lord is saying. You snakes, you serpents. 
Okay, you evil, wicked people in high places. Who told you that the wrath was coming? Oh, it don't matter because the most high Yahuwah, he is in charge of all things. And like I said, when we see the destruction of our enemies, you know, the reward, pretty much, you know, the scripture tells us when we see that it's, it's the reward for being doing right, for doing, um, for being righteous, for turning away from Babylon, from, um, from the wrath of the most high. Okay. Oh, look at that. Heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass away. And that was a scripture I wasn't even looking for, but the Holy Spirit wanted it to come. So it says in Luke 21, 23, I just wanted to throw this out here because it said, Whoa, woe unto them that I will child and to them that give suck in those days. This is the day of the Lord. Okay, and I'm gonna go to a couple of scriptures about that. For there shall be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Okay, so this is anybody that, that did not hawk in their, their uh, ears to what the prophets and the prophets have been saying in this hour and um, have warned them and, you know, the Lord have sent people to you and you still do not want to do what thus said the Lord told you to do. And so, okay, well... The wrath is upon you. And that's just what it is. I, I can't give you no more grace and mercy. I've given you mercy, mercy, chance, chance, mercy, mercy, chance. And you want to do what you want to do. And so this is going to happen. So it says, Zep Zephaniah uh, chapter 1 and 15 says, that day is a day of wrath, which we know, a day of anger, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloomness, a day of clouds and thickness okay this is a terrible day the day when the savior our yeshua our yahawashah our messiah our perfect lamb the king of all kings the lord of all lords the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end okay when that day comes it is going to be a day of gloom and i think we know what the word gloom means but let's just pull it up just for just for the sake of it. Let's just pull up gloom. Let's see what gloom says. Gloom sounds like doom to me, but the word gloom says, um, this please, um, a sullen look of displeasement. So people are gonna be looking sad. <laughs> And let's see what distress means, okay? Like I said, I love etymology. This is how you can really see what the Lord is telling you, and it may help you to want to do right <laughs> when you see these words. Okay, this is the day everybody going to have anxiety. This is going to be worse than this coronavirus and, um, you know, them shutting down the whole world and all the things that's happening and the anguish. It's going to be way worse. So this is like, um, this is like a rehearsal for the day of the Lord, okay? And if those people cannot, uh, cannot accept what's going on now, then you know the day of the Lord, you're just going to perish. You, you, you know, like, you better get on your knees and you better call upon the Lord now because you know the day of the Lord is going to be 10 times worse than what we are seeing now, okay? And so Zephaniah 8 and 14 tells us, and then I'm going to go into one more scripture. Wait a minute. I got like three more scriptures and I'm going to be done. What happened? Why I do that? Hold on, y'all. Something ain't right. Why is doing that? I don't know why it's doing it because this stuff, this is Zephaniah. Let's see. Did I put an extra number on something? Give me a second because it was just working and it just doesn't want to come up. 
I'm just gonna put the seven nine eight. Let's see what come up, cause for some reason it don't want to come up now. So hold on, let me go here. Cause it, it must be something that, that the devil just don't want us to see. So let's see. <laughs> Do it like this because I don't know why you ain't coming up. Yeah, ain't that what I spell? What in the world? That's all right. That is our or was it Zachariah? Oh, maybe that's why. Maybe it's Zachariah. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Okay, well. Let's see. Give me a second, y'all, because I'm like, wait a minute now. Maybe it was Zachariah, and I was thinking, you know, Zephaniah and Zachariah, they kind of the same. So maybe that's what happened. Let's see. Let's see if that's what happened. Yep. Zachariah. And I had put like quotation marks that was Zephaniah. Okay. But Zachariah 8 and 14 said, But for thus said the most high Yahuwah of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath said the most high host and I repented now. So they did not repent. Okay. They did not repent. And so we know um, that when you repent, you need to turn away from your sins. You need to renounce, deny your flesh. Okay. And you need to start choosing to live a righteous life, uh, not of a carnal mind, but of a spiritual mind. Okay. And so I'm gonna go to one. I got a couple more scriptures, but I want to go to this. I want to go to this one. Some. Give me one second. Yes, it my computer. It it likes to it likes to go slow, and um, I kind of move fast. So Galatians five and twenty tells us. Uh, let's see. Of course he didn't. But I rebuke you, Satan. Okay. Galatians. Okay, Galatians 5 and 20. Let's see. So it says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies. These are some of the things that will provoke the most high to wrath. And I think I want to pull out, I don't even know how many scriptures I want to pull out, but um, idolatry, witchcraft. These are things that will definitely provoke, uh, will, 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 will push the most high to anger, okay? So I'm, I'm giving y'all these scriptures because maybe y'all don't know what will provoke the most high to anger okay so it says in galatians 5 19 24 now the works of the flesh are manifest like i just told you we don't want to operate in the flesh we need to deny our flesh and we need to have uh the fruits of the spirit which i have a teaching on that um how to have relationship with the most high um i put that as one of the uh links for the video and it says idolatry which like i told y'all that's spiritual and that's also uh physical and that goes back to the polygamous and all of that. But I'm going to do a video on that as well because each man should have one wife. And that's just what it should be. The Lord did not give four E's and say, um, here, Adam, here go your four E's. So I'm, a, I'm done with that. But fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, uh, um, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, Rebelling and such like of the which I tell you before, and I have also told you in the time past that they which that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high. Okay, and see they go to the fruits of the spirit. So I didn't even want to even pull all that up into there. So because I already did that, but we'll just go into it. Meekness, temperance, um, love, joy, peace, long suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith. Um, these are the things that will get you into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so I want to go into, let's see what this word right here means. 
Okay. Let's see what this word means. Because sometimes, like I said, we read this stuff and be like, well, what, is, what, do you, what do you mean? You know, what does this mean? And um, I guess I'm just going off the fly with the Holy Spirit right now, what the Holy Spirit want me to do. Because I'm about to be done. But I'm like, well, let's go into. Now that's your pace. Okay. All right. So the viciousness, or it probably, okay. It says lustful, inclined to lust. Wow. So this is one of the words that we should really be meditating on because this is one of the things that are definitely um is a big problem in today's society about being lust, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And I got a teaching on it as well, too. Um, but lustfulness, that's what I wish I could say it right, because it's like lavishes. Lavish, lavish, lavishous, lavish, lashes, lish. Yeah, I think I was saying it right the first time. Lascivious, maybe that's what it is. Lascivious, lewd, playful. Um, so these things, okay. We are so we know right there when he said the uncleanness, we already know which going back to just you know, maybe having demonic spirits in you. Um, when you are unclean, you know, the Bible tells us in um, Matthew that he had an unclean spirit, you know, and so these might be like uh, lesions in you, the demonic spirits in you. Okay. So we don't want to have any unclean spirits. So I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Some stuff got chopped off. Like, comment, and subscribe, and um, ch check out my other videos. Be blessed.